Hi, this is JP Laforce from Studio JPEG. In this video, I will show you the workflow that I use to post-process the Timescape videos that I post on the YouTube channel once in a while. So this one is my raw workflow. So I will show you how I add the images to Adobe After Effects. And that's where I'm going to do the editing of the raw files and do the color correction and after that I'm gonna add the video in Adobe Premiere Pro to finish the editing of the video and add some music and stuff like that. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create a new project. So we're gonna go in File, New, New Project and we have our Untitled Project here. And then in here, we're going to add a new composition. That's where we're going to put in the images. In this case, I'm going with a 4K resolution and 24 frames per second. And the rest, I'm going to just keep the same uh, for now. So there is no preset that I found for 4K, so just had to go in custom and all that. So I'm just going to call it Timescape 4K Raw. And then the place I took it, which is Florence Bristol. And you can select a background color, but that's not really important. Now the next part we have to do is to import file. Now I'm going to select the first one and you see a check mark here, camera raw sequence. It means I don't have to import all the images. I just select the 2261 and it's going to automatically know that 2262, 63, 64, 65 and all that are all part of that sequence. And after you put the image in, uh, this is, it still remembers the settings I had put it. One thing that I find lacking is you cannot view the other frames. Since this is a sunset, it means that the first images are always going to be brighter and then the last images are going to be darker as the sun sets down. So it adds a bit of difficulty to the setting. But just to give you an idea, uh, you know, this is the image closer to what it was. So I had 74 in those two and then 53. So this is the image pretty much as the original was. And this is the one after editing. All right, so basically I kept the exposure the same and the contrast the same. And I play with the highlights to bring the sun down a little bit here too, so it's not overexposed. And you'll notice as you play with it, you can activate the highlight clipping warnings here for the highlights and the shadows so you can see here like this part is blown out and then when we get near minus 74 there's still a little bit of blown out highlights but not that much and I'm gonna start using the video a little further from this because if you can see here uh, all those little specks here, those are flies and wasps and all sorts of other stuff that was flying that day. So uh, the part before the sun really sets down was not really usable because of all the bugs and the camera was too close to the top of the trees. And I did the same with the shadows. You can see here, like these parts are blown out. But as you raise the shadows, then 
you start recovering a lot of details. And that's where using raw images really pays off so you can bring back a lot of detail. I added some clarity so you can see the waves better. And I added some vibrance. And then the curves I left the same. The I did add a lot of noise reduction here because I'm bringing back a lot of shadows from the tree line here. A lot of noise was creeping in. So I put the luminance noise reduction at 78. And that's one of the main reasons that I have the clarity up to 53 here to kind of combat that. The U, I did add a little bit more green and a little bit to the aquas. The saturation, I added a lot of saturation here, but just to specific colors. So I would check, you know, each one of them. Uh, do I like, you know, which, how far I can go before, you know, if you look here, you know, everything looks artificial and that's not good. So I try to find the numbers where I found I was adding in more color, but not to the point where everything became artificial. And the uh, luminance, I found that subtracting 35 to the blue gave a nicer sky. Uh, split toning, I did not use. Lens correction, I did not use. The effects, no. And pretty much the rest, I just kept the same. So after all that was done, you click OK. And all right, so it gives you the image sequence here. Which, all right, so I drag it here and put it in the first frame. And uh, here you will notice that we are dealing with 4K raw video. So my computer will have a hard time processing all of this. All right, so now comes the time where I'm going to reframe this a bit because now I'm zoomed in too much into the image because the T2i raw images are actually bigger than 4K. So I'm going to have to downscale this a bit. And as you move, you're going to notice that uh, you have some scales here. So for both X and Y. So I try to get to a number where everything fits in and where I get, you know, just uh, one scale. So if I go... All right, so 75% scale here, that's good. And then using the up arrow, I'm going to... You know, it's a big uh, debate, you know, how much sky do I want because a lot of cool, cool stuff is happening in the sky. But at the same time, you know, I want to have some of my foreground here to give more dimension to the shot. So I went with, let's say, something around this. And if I press play at this point, there is no way that my computer can handle it. You'll see this is the computer loading each frame. And then it takes forever and ever and ever to load each frame. The same thing if I click further into the sequence. You, know, you can see what the frame is going to look like. And so that's how you just scrub through and select frames at random points to make sure everything looks the way you like it to look. And when you're done with this, then you can save your After Effects composition. Now I'm not going to save this one which since I already made one where I spent uh, more time getting everything correctly. So I'm just going to close this for now and open up in 
Adobe Premiere Pro and I'll show you how to complete the process from there. Alright, so now we're in Adobe Premiere Pro and I'm gonna click, click on New Project and I'm gonna find a location. So in this case this folder will do, that's the folder I used to do that and normally for the name of the file I just select the same thing but since I already created that one I'll select the third one and these parts capture format and all that I don't really touch anything in there the time code or audio samples or whatever uh, just the defaults are good in the sequence part, I normally don't pay attention to any of this, but in this case, since we want something very particular, then I'm going to select in the red R3D HD 4K and the 4K HD 16 by 9 24 frames. And basically, that was the only preset I could see that uh, would fit with uh, 4K with the resolution that I wanted. So Adobe Premiere will now create the project and the sequence and all that. I'm gonna go in my computer here and I did uh, pre-process uh, this file here from this is from my After Effects composition but being a 22, almost 23 gig file, it's not really any faster than if I just take the Adobe After Effects here, so the Timescape from RAW. So I'm just gonna copy this over. And I downloaded the uh, And it does okay. So in after in Premiere Pro, you have to select which composition to take from the After Effects file, and then I copied over. This is the MP3 that I used. I put this in here. I put it here. Then I just trim and. If you press shift, it's going to stick to the end of the previous clip. So that way my mp3 file and my images are now the same duration. And that's pretty much it. Uh, you could add special effects or special anything else if you would like to. Again, if you select a different frame to see what it's going to look like, it does take forever so really there's not uh, that much editing I can do very quickly here but uh, then I just go file export media and in the format I go for h.264 and then you have all sorts of settings in here. So normally I like going for the YouTube settings, the this one here, that's the closest to 24 frames. But since I want to have 4K, there's a few changes you have to make. So the level you have to raise it all the way up to 5.1 then the frame rate you have to lower it to 24 and then finally you can put 3840 by 2160 it's gonna render here and output name you just click here and it's gonna ask you which folder you want it in it always uh, defaults to the last folder where you exported a video sequence so 
Here you just select save and it's gonna do it there. And when you're ready, you click export. And in my case, I think it took me about four or five hours to process the video. And then I was able to upload it to YouTube. Now, the most surprising part of all of this, if you go and look at the videos it created, this is the MP4 file created from their raw workflow, and it's only 39 megabytes. So all that from their CR2s are about 22 megabytes each. So it's really impressive that it, the H.264 compressed it all that much. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. If you liked it, please click like and subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave them in the box below. I'll see you next time. Have a great day.